Hello everyone, it's Love here and today we are playing the only color that has basically everything. Extremely cool planeswalkers, perfect sweepers and extremely good win cons on top of great removal. So we just have it all with this deck. And today we will have some nice outplays and we will even play Arena in the face of Boros. So I think that will be pretty exciting. So guys, if you aren't subscribed, please consider it supports the channel. If you like the content, this is the best way to just say thank you and support the channel. Uh, I'm really thankful for everyone that subscribed so far thank you guys you are absolutely amazing and let's go into gameplay because that's why you are here so have fun guys all right we are going first with path of Perry and liliana that's usually a nice combination and you know what let's start strong with a turn one duress <laughs> oh boy oh boy oh boy all right at least we got the value card but well this this won't be easy that definitely won't be easy and with Liliana we have some targets but we probably want to get to zero cards in our hand like they have so many good discard targets is there a chance we just go trespasser and try to you know smog them in the face I mean it's not the worst they don't have place and we exile the memory of the rouge, guaranteed. That's actually kind of huge. And they only have white march at this stage of the game. Like, we can get extra value just because we are on the play, right? I The problem is that we probably won't kill him, but at least we can start hitting him. They can start attacking Lilian on the next turn with the, with the bird, so that will be a problem. All right, we play the land, let's go Lily. You'll have work to do. <laughs> easy. Just easy. But it, it isn't the biggest deal, I guess. I mean, it's a big deal, but probably not the biggest deal. I tell you, man. Trespasser. You need to go to work, man. Because <laughs> I didn't really draw anything else. Like, it's six lands and Trespasser and Lilianas. No Sorin's in sight. I have Path of Prayer to discard. They might draw a, uh, you know, normalized, but it's fine. Like, we need to work with it. And if they go for the pair, they are getting extra damage. I think they should just go March and discard a card, honestly. I think it's worth it. Okay, they, they definitely don't think the same way. <laughs> I guess they do just want to sunfall on the next turn. Which will cost them a little bit cars, maybe. Takanuma will be risky, I wonder what I will draw. It's just a 1-1, one -one, so not the biggest threat to... Well, listen. Listen. We are definitely going with this play. And let's start to get some free cards. You can see why Lidiana is so strong. I'm tired of your secrets. Like, when you get to the zero cards, man, discarding for free every turn, like, you can see the value. And we discard already two cards. So, if they attack with this, and even this, it's just three damage, so I think it's worth it. Especially that we have some kind of select. Well, this is something. This is something. But sure, that can be game deciding. Let's go like this. They know the card is decent because we discard the field of ruin and they can check it. Alright, the bird. The bird of doom. They are going for it. Full tap. Full swing. But that means. Oh man, this could be for. Oh, it's funny that they go for Liliana. Like, Ashok? Bro. Okay, thank. Okay, chill, Liliana. Please chill. <laughs> All right, so I have to play those and then give him the discard. So unfortunately, he will probably leave the sun for right. All right, I mean we have only way one way to do it. We also need the land, so let's go for the anchorage. We get rid of one of the problems. Oh, we kind of didn't need to. I thought we need this one swamp. I didn't count correctly. Listen, it is what it is. We just play the stuff and we keep discarding his stuff. 
And that's a problem, because if he keeps the sun phone, no way, man. Alright, that's that's a that's a big deal. Now this is a card that gets them back into the game. Uh, how much loyalty do we have on Ashok? Seven? No, we still go for this. You know, this is still a card or something. Like it's a it's a good card or overall. Alright. He needs to cast Sunfall and go for the they should go for the map token maybe. They would possibly get an extra card. Oh man, this is this is huge. So, do we go for selection? Like the exile effect isn't amazing yet. We could go for creatures. So they won't have cards. We know we know this. Sorry, I need to think because that's a huge deal. Killing him with Ashek tokens isn't even good. I mean, we can make a lot of them. I mean, we can make a lot of them. I just exile, I don't play anything. That's not the right Ashok. If I draw, I could with. If there will be two lands at top, and then I'm really behind. I think I need to keep pressuring him. Go! You won't be outsmarting me. Okay. Okay. Because we can grow those. Uh, I think we, we don't block it. I think we want to be aggressive. And if he attacks, he cannot block. Or this is probably not the card he wants to draw. <laughs> oh, we'll see. He likes it. Really? Okay. Okay. You chose the wrong day to and here's the land for memory delusion on the next turn. And now it's better to draw a card, right? No, no. All right, guys. He doesn't have memory delusion on this turn. I think this is the play. Man, this will be wild. Man, I I feel stressed about it. It's risky, but I think this is the right play. Now they will grow. Exile one of them, absolutely. This is huge. This is really nice draw. Yep, that's why we are doing it. And he can draw Sunfall with this, but he needs to wait one full turn to draw it. And see, that's why we're thinking. If you do it right, you can absolutely outvalue them before they go memory doors. The next one wouldn't change anything because that did nothing. All right, we are going first. This will be this will be sketchy, but we are able to play arena on curve with double black. This will be colorless. This will be black, right? So I kind of like it. I think we can make it work. And we still have trespasser for some, you know, some interesting action. But hopefully we won't need it. I hope we can just keep uh, responding with removal. Oh wow! Oh so far. Alright, the game just changed to can he draw a winning hand and can we draw a sweeper? Sure. I will take the damage because I think it might change his play a little bit. Alright, Edict is kinda hor horrible against <laughs> So you know what, uh, let's just go with it. Because right now I need to play Arena, I need to survive as long as possible and play a sweeper. Well, that was the moment to play it, huh? So, this is the only turn we, when we can play Arena. We could also play Trespasser and try to slow them down. Oh, man. It will be really hard. But I think that, like, we won't have black mana for a while. So I think I will risk it. I will risk it. Is that recruiter already? If they have two recruiters, that's a recruiter turn probably. Alright, so they force they get rid of some damage for some card advantage. Not sure if that's good or bad for us, we'll see. Well the draw is absolute horrible. Or absolutely horrible. Uh, we play like this. 
and I mean we try to, you know, slow the game as much as possible, keep playing hands and draw a sweeper. So, uh, you know, the usual, the usual anti-aggro gameplay of can you draw the right card to win the game. Alright, so they will reward something which doesn't matter because they get free cards from their creatures. Uh, we actually need to pay life and, you know, invest a full card into drawing some cards. But, well, we aren't aggro, so we don't have access to this high value place. That also costs zero mana. Alright. <laughs> That's kinda crazy, you have to admit. Alright, so what can we do? I mean, we can go for the throat and march. But I think better play is just to go trespasser. Of course they will go this. Uh, but we can kill Knight of Aeos uh, at least. Let's get rid of the Inspector. Of course it all won't really matter if we don't draw a Sweeper. But we need to play into our out. Of course it's uncounterable. Man, I, li I like current aggro. Uh, plays that win on turn 2. Uncounterable cards. And cards that cost 0 mana are 4-4 and draws cards. And they can discard all the cards because they're getting, getting free cards, man. I'm like, with Arena, I have the same amount of cards as he does. And now they can finally full swing. Oh, they will feel great about it. So we mitigate the most damage. And let's see, if we can hit Path of Pearl and the Land, we should be kind of fine, honestly. But if we don't, we lose. And this is a sweeper, kinda. Uh, so this will be what? Six damage, so we die. That's why we needed Path of Pearl. I guess we can go this into March. I guess it kinda works, right? So let's go for the evidence. Uh, evidence should be... Actually, we want to save creatures. Because we... I, I guess that's all trespassers, so maybe we don't. And what is the card? I don't think there's... Oh, there is a Resort Ring. So if they don't respond... Uh, if they don't respond to this... And that's actually a very cool play. I didn't think about it. Now we can get rid of their hand. And no instant plays. Well, that was cooler than I expected. And... Yeah. Double call. Yeah, just, just make creatures. Creatures and try to, you know, hit those dailies so we can log off. Alright. So right now, he cannot play at the end step, so he needs to use the clue, and that might give us some more time. And th this is what I meant, right? We drew a sweeper, so we can play the game. <laughs> if that wasn't the leak of rap, we would already concede. And now we need to try to recover all the life that we lost. All right, they will try to kill us with, you know, creatures that create creatures. All right, sure. I mean, that's it, they don't have more. So we can try to go for extra value. Oh, this is a nice one. All right, we should win game from this if we play smart, hopefully. I can play Lidiana and Sorin. That should be good enough, right? Unless they draw two cards in one, but they shouldn't. They actually shouldn't. We don't need Mirex right now. I could also just go March, which I mean is kind of more guaranteed even, right? And I can discard the arena. Okay, this is better play. Like, this is strictly better play. So I can go for 4 damage. Yeah, so we drew the right cards and I and this is what I mentioned in the early game. We kind of... Wow, this is insanely good. Two cards in one. All right, I guess. Two, four. We need to do it now. Uh, otherwise, uh, he will tap and get a free scry, which we don't really want. That's still very, very strong. And that's the only creature that Liliana doesn't hit. All right, we need Shelly soon. Very, very, very soon.
I think they will take the damage, but they might be tempted to go for the lightning. All right. We definitely play a land. We make another vampire because we need as much lightning as possible. You will serve me well. We need to be kind of smart about it because it won't be easy. So if we remove this, this actually hurts us, right? This actually hurts us because then they will have one damage and two four four. I mean, we have the life linker. I mean, we kind of have the life linker. Because we could Ashok and make two creatures. That means the Evangelist cannot really attack. I think this is just a, a little bit better overall. Alright, man. You need to work so hard to kill this kind of, you know, deck. Alright. Don't overthink. Let's see what he draws. Uh, even Gleeful Demolition doesn't work because he doesn't have an artifact, right? Wow, one card. Infinite possibilities for an aggro player. It can take years, centuries, or maybe just a swing call. <laughs> Alright. I think this is the play. It kinda answers everything and that was exactly what we were going for. And contrary to Monored, they usually don't have like combat tricks. So I'm getting back to 7. I still have the Vampire. Alright, I need Shorded to stabilize. Okay, this is kinda mini Shorded, I guess. And now we can get rid- oh, but first we draw a card, that's for sure. Because we need good cards. Okay, this is what we wanted. That means... I only need to get rid of, of his card. He doesn't have resort reinforcements in the in the deck. Off you go. So we swing, we gain life. You can see that this deck can gain a lot of life. And he will probably scoop when he sees Charlotte, right? And let's go Trespasser as well. This will exile two creatures. I mean, let's go like this, in case we want uh, the leak over of the Knight of Chaos at you know, some point in this game. Alright, and we won. Man. Man, we actually won this. Oh, can I please get a different matchup now? I earned it. Okay, our opponent has two cards, and it will take him 10 to 30 seconds to realize he lost, and then he will either rope or leave the game. Alright, man. I needed good reflex for this one. So the guy, we were emoting a little bit. He was thinking, highlighting all the cards. And I think he was deliberately stalling before he left. So, you know, the classic. All right, we are going first. A lot of colorless mana, but we can play Liliana if we play it right. So, I mean, let's go for it and see what happens. It's not a mount time. This might be an actual game of magic, guys. <laughs> right. Uh, we definitely play Field of Ruin and, you know, see if they want to use the map token. That's, some or, that, that's already some decent value for them. If they play another creature that doesn't have immediate effect, we just go Liliana, right? We, we kind of want to clear the board with Liliana. And with instant speed, sure, enjoy your one damage. They fought, they decided they will bait the reaction, and they're like, huh. Ha! <laughs> what am I supposed to do now? That's a tap land. An irritating one. Very nice. Uh, so, how do we kill it? That's the favorite question. Um, Edict. I don't think... They, they might play Kaito. March. It will get better in time. Yeah, hello. I'm thinking. I have three removal to choose from. Uh... Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking, bro. I actually think we go with the march, maybe. The other ones are a bit easier to use. And don't forget he has the reef that will come into, you know, 
into play at some point, probably. And I think this is the moment for Liliana. Listen, it will hurt a little bit. It will hurt, but I won't double removal on her. So I will discard Ashok. I'm so far from Ashok that I think, you know, that is fine. We need to get some tempo fuel. And I don't think they can easily kill her unless they have, like, edict. Oh, that's, that's so cool. <laughs> Alright, Rona, sure. And now you can see why we like it. Creature number one. That was another consider, I believe. Alright, I have Field of Ruin. I probably should think about it, but, you know, I'm not great at it. So, do I want to Field of Ruin this? Not yet, not yet, definitely not yet. I kinda want to keep Liliana, but if the trade will be good, I will minus two. We still have Ashok, we have Mirek, so we have some card potential here. And our opponent kinda lost all the tempo. This Rona play was basically a sacrifice fodder for just two loyalty and you know that they don't like this kind of play. Oh, I see, I see. I see. Oh, that might force Liliana. Because I think he has something. But that also means we can feel the ruin on this turn. Yep, we are doing it. And uh, they can ramp with it. But I don't think free mana should be a big difference unless they play like quick study. It doesn't really fit the deck, so they shouldn't. And even then, it's still worth it, I think. Okay. Blue mana, as expected, because the blue mana protects the creatures easier. Hmm. I really like killing my opponent's hand. <laughs> like, I'll be honest. I really like it. And this is super expensive to kill Shredder, so we keep the cheap removal. We can use one on our turn, one on his turn. Go for the throat. Alright. Not the biggest deal for him. How do you work? Whenever a player casts their second spell each turn, so if we attack on the next turn, it will kinda not perfectly work. They will cycle a card. I think they have protection spell. They took the blue mana, so I, I think... Okay. Well, that's good for us. <laughs> oh man, even if we whiff with a land, it's actually not a whiff, we play Ashok. Oh boy. Oh boy, he won't like it. And that's a land. One of those cards is a land. So, I mean, we can attack fully his hand, right? I will go a little bit risky and greedy. Because I want to have a chance to kill his hand. If I draw a land, I play land, Ashok, and get rid of the card. Easy. And that was the upside. And now he has nothing. And it didn't even cost me anything. See? That was the play and the idea behind what we did. That's why I kinda wasted Edict instead of just going minus two. Alright, our opponent goes first. We have some removal. Alright, this... Man, those two landers are getting me today. Oh, man. Will I draw the four land? My, the ancient question on this channel. Alright. I have the beanstalk. Alright, this... This is not perfect. This is even less perfect. So, I mean, if we miss next turn, I think we are out. I don't think we can win. Like, they will get so much value, and we are already super behind by being on the draw. We cannot answer up the Beanstalk generally. Yeah, we, we just lost the game, probably. But we'll try. We'll still try. Well, that was fun. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, do I want the Trespasser? Honestly, this is not the type of card that really makes a difference here, and removal might be important at some part some point in the game but man i already feel like the game is over zendikar sure so now they can start doing extreme amount of cards with up the beanstalk and we couldn't even hit our man it's two mana to six <laughs> all based on who draws what so that's my favorite part 
a great game of magic and let's put this in the stats because deck didn't perform with 26 lands we aren't able to draw the third one because if he doesn't have like a perfect opening with aggro we have a fair shot we just need to hit Liliana on curve and we should be kinda okay Dimir, well so far we are not very good more Sorins than lands I play three of those or four and 26 of those it shouldn't be one to one uh, i think this is a good moment if and th that's the problem right if i knew i have a land i would just play lidiana and get extremely good draw i mean this can work you know what let's play this just because this cannot be countered and we still have lidiana for any kind of removal well punished absolutely punished. I think we go with Liliana. If they have Edict, we are in some serious trouble. But usually they don't. And we have one good card that we can absolutely discard. I need to get into Soaring Mana and I need to stabilize with it. We absolutely overdrew them. Um, is that... Alright. Interesting. So I can go Mirex or Soaring. Listen. I have so many of them, I can waste one or two on counter spells. <laughs> because if he doesn't have a counter spell, we are in an extremely nice spot. If he has a counter spell, we might try again and again and again. And here it is the card of my dreams. What will you be? Yeah, that's a good one. That is a card advantage. Do we try to go for ultimate? He has a lot of troubles right now. Listen, that's very, very greedy. I will do it only once in the, with, this, with this kind of cards. All right, sure. Not the happiest about it, but he cannot kill any of the planeswalkers, right? And we can kill it. So while it is good for him, Yep, I think he missed the land drop and he knows that he cannot kill any of the planeswalkers and I'm getting so much value, like I'm removing this with minus two and I'm drawing cards. If he cannot keep up already, he's kind of out of the game already. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and this deck. Uh, mono black is definitely one of the most enjoyable colors right now for uh, if you go mono, just because it has everything. And the idea for this deck came when I was making an Ors of Planeswalkers deck and I realized, man, all of them are black. <laughs> I can just go mono black. However, we have those sunfalls, some uh, white synergies, but you can just go pure black and it's good enough. With Deadly Cover-Up, you have the missing piece. That was the main thing you always needed to go ors of with because you didn't have a good sweeper. With Deadly Cover-Up, not only you have a full sweeper, but in some of the matchups, it's actually better than the Sunfall. When, if you played Sunfall, you know how that card is in, you know, value matchups or against like control decks. This is something they will actually counter spell. It might be the main thing they counter spell because you know the stone brain effects uh, is extremely good against any like decks that have very few win cons like a control deck with Jace and Emperor and Mirex. They have like three ways to win the game. If you exile all of them, especially that Emperor can be nullified without dedicated card. You can just use your you know removal to get rid of her, and that means it's only Jace and maybe Mirex. We have Field of Ruins, two of them, so we should even win the Mirex wars. So so it's, it's the hidden power of the deck. All right, and I, I realized that I rambled for so long and I didn't make a mention of the stats. We went four wins, three losses, and to be honest, guys, I think two of those losses were strictly not drawing the third land ever. So, I mean, it should be way better, but it's already pretty decent. While we have so much removal against all the creature decks, Shorded against Monoreds and Boros, Path of Paris, Deadly Cover-Ups, and Soaring that creates life linkers. During the games, you have seen how huge this card is. And imagine, like, it seems like a 2-3 for 4, 4 mana. It's not really the case. You basically get 4-6 in total stats with flying and lifelink. If you can translate Soaring purely into the vampires, the value is insane and it will stabilize you fully with the arena. We only played 2, so it's not the biggest focus of the deck. But when building the deck, it was actually one of the last additions. I realized that I don't have enough 3 drops and well, with Shorted and Sorin and Marches, 
I mean, we can go with the arena because we have so much life gain. And Shorted is already so great at closing games. Uh, even though, you know, you, we usually don't play creatures in this kind of control decks and Shorted can eat the removal. Remember, you have Liliana and this is what makes Shorted so infinitely better because you, you know what they discard first? Removal. Sweepers, because you are a control deck, they think it's a dead card. So when you get rid of all of them, then you play Shelly, and believe me, when they are in top deck mode, the answering this card is a nightmare. And you you play it when they are in top deck mode because you can force it. With Liliana on board, it's really easy to get everyone to zero cards, especially that your value is Planeswalker, so you can play those cards into the board like Arena, Sorin, Ashok, and you have empty hand, but you still have cards. They are just in the Planeswalkers. And that's how you kind of cheat the system with the Liliana play. And you have seen it in today's games, and we get control decks to zero cards in full top deck mode. Uh, Trespasser is a nice addition, even though it's a creature, it still discards a card, so it synergizes with Liliana, it has the exile, and it has the life gain. So so it does a lot of things that we need and even if they can answer it it will be seen on their hand it's two cards to remove this one and with the arena you kind of you know can go wild with those <laughs> and it's it's just so hard for all the aggro decks like if you ever played mono red you know that when you see this card on the play on curve you kind of want to concede already <laughs> like the live game the ward everything is just so obnoxious for all the aggro decks and with this you can even raise them which normally isn't like great idea because you you don't have too many creatures so you probably won't finish it but with shorted every damage matters getting them from 20 to 0 or from 12 to 0 is a huge difference it also motivates your opponent to keep playing spells main phase which sometimes makes the game easier so yeah and to be honest Ashok and Sorin are probably the most favorite planeswalkers in this deck they do so much against value decks and they can also answer all the aggro decks with the tokens the tokens are like man s class lifelink two creatures for two loyalty that's insane and they can grow and you have seen in one of the games it makes such a huge difference so i'm i'm talking way too much but i really think this kind of deck is super interesting and guys see this happens when i don't check the timer and just i just start talking i could go half an hour on this deck but to be fair i think black planeswalkers are really really good right now and nearly each one of them is amazing, absolutely amazing. So this is what makes the deck so powerful and sure that we all know the power. So combined with the removal that you have seen so many times, like everything is so efficient in this deck. So I hope it will perform for you. It did perform for me. So guys, <laughs> let's, let's stop the rambling for today. The next part tomorrow. All right. So thank you for watching. If you are subscribed, really, really thank you for all the support. And yeah, see you tomorrow, guys.